So I ran a poll on Twitter asking what you wanted to see and a surprising amount of you wanted to know about the health packs in Dead Space and from a biological standpoint how these things would even work. Surprising outcome but as always I have a theory on that. This channel is rapidly becoming like another channel I know. Hmm. Anyhow, in this episode we will be covering the health packs as well as the lore on the rig armor system as clearly that is a delivery system needed to keep Isaac chugging along despite sustaining life-threatening wounds. That, I mean honestly, would literally take us out rather quickly. So let's check out the rig armor system, health packs, and really any of the lore surrounding it of the Dead Space franchise and try not to get stabbed in the face by necromorphs while we do this. A great place to start is going to be with the rig armor. Rig stands for resource integration gear and is quite important to the daily life of an individual living in the Dead Space universe. Originally designed during the 22nd or 23rd century is a lot like life alert and developed to monitor the vital signs for elder patients. I've fallen and I can't get up. This particular piece of equipment would keep an eye on things and alert others should a person go into duress or just flatline. Eventually people began to see the usefulness of this equipment and made it into kind of a more standard usage among the adult population. This spine mounted piece of tech could interface with the nervous system of an individual and give quite a bit of information on them. It is stated that it might have also been able to tell doctors the presence of a bacteria or viral infection currently taking place within the patient's body. As time passed and everyone began to realize how invaluable these rigs were, they began to alter them towards specific functions. Engineering, military tech, and civilian usage all began to be filled with rig-wearing individuals. In the military wing, the rig spinal piece was attached to a thick armor to show how a soldier was doing. They would also attach things like stasis units and integrate that into the armor itself along with oxygen. In the engineering suits, they could be upgraded with more armor and this would be quite useful in a more hostile environment. And in Isaac's case, this hostile environment is going to be dismantled dismemberment becoming a serious threat. Stasis was also added to these suits as well as oxygen meters. Civilian suits were just closed with the spinal navigation in place. All rigs were also equipped with a navigation system in place to guide the user as well as a 2D projector which the user could interface and communicate with those around. It was also possible for individuals to send coordinates to other rig systems as sort of a mapping system which also became useful during necromorph outbreaks as if one individual group could clear a path then the others could follow. Follow, though typically they would just be completely annihilated regardless. Something I did want to add is it doesn't really matter whether it's a military suit, engineering suit, advanced suit, whatever. They are all typically going to possess kinesis as that's a module that can be actually connected to the suit itself. Well that's all well and good, but how does it actually work concerning the body? Just a fair warning, we are going to be treading a little outside of concrete confirmed canon at this point as it's going to become really all hypothesis and utilizing what we know about the body now now to determine how the spinal system would interface with the body. And the reason for this is it doesn't actually go into too much detail in game how these systems work. So as we all know at this point, Rig's most basic component is going to be the spinal system interfacing with the nervous system. This interface will allow the system in place to read the health of the body, but it doesn't really give us a clear idea of how it's actually going to read it. Well, it's clear to me that the body wouldn't just be straight up stabbed by a probe into the spine. However, I would imagine there is something in place allowing the Rig to read your health. So first things first, let's start with blood pressure. Considering part of the rig sits on the wrist of the person, it can be easily seen that it might assess the blood pressure to read what's happening in the body. During an event with extensive damage to the body, a wound would be open and blood would leave the body. At first, this would put a lot of stress on the circulatory system, possibly raising the blood pressure, but eventually it would begin to plummet. At a certain point of blood loss, the rig system would determine that this is going to be damage to the body. It would more than likely lower the overall health rating as the body body begins to struggle. So I believe the blood pressure is going to be a major indication of overall health to an individual. It takes a baseline of the person and from that it can figure out whether you have lost blood and are still doing okay. This might actually be at the beginning why you have to sync up your rig before you start the events of Dead Space 1. It's taking a baseline reading of Isaac's health. So basically judging by blood loss, how fast your heart is beating and at what force it's beating, it can determine if there is a wound in the body and how grievous that wound is going to be. 
be, as well as how the user is functioning. Another possibility could be overall functionality of the internal organs and stress hormones. Again, when a body is put under stress, your meat suit begins to fire a lot of signals to the nervous system. Considering that the health meter is reading the nervous system, it can more than likely interpret these signals being sent to the brain almost like an electroencephalogram or EEG. EEG is used to monitor the brain waves in different instances and understandably in the future it could be completely possible that it can read more than just brain waves but signals traveling to and from the brain via spinal cord. Any damage to the body would register as extreme pain signals with the rig system going to interpret that. Then coupled with the blood pressure monitoring system it can probably interpret how bad the wound is and where it actually is located. High pain signals plus a drop in blood pressure would equate to open wound. Another possibility associated with the reg system is the direct monitoring of enzymes and chemical signals sent via circulatory system. When damage is inflicted on our skins, muscles, bones, anything, the body goes into repair mode immediately and attempts to stop the bleeding. Chemical signals are going to be sent out by the damaged tissue and surrounding tissue as like a sort of call for aid to a specific area. At first fibrin would arrive in the area and platelets would be attaching to this to form a clot. Depending on how much of a chemical is released by the body, the rig could interpret this information as wound severity. However, if I had to pick, I would say it would more than likely be a combination of all three working in conjunction with one another to measure the health of an individual, with the greatest emphasis going to be on the nervous system activity and signals being interpreted. To me, this would make more sense as hormones and enzymes are very slow and kind of a, uh, a laggy way to communicate, and blood pressure can only give you so much information. But electrical signals in the body are very quick and depending on strength and location of the signal, this can give you a lot of information. So that still leaves the question, what in the world are health packs then? I believe their understanding lies actually in their coloring. For specifically Isaac, they are light blue and his health bar on his rig are also going to be light blue. Depending on the size of the health pack, there are a number of cylinders on the pack which will get larger and have more which will give you more health. This says to me that there is clearly going to be a material contained inside which is to be expected but I am imagine that this material is going to be a liquid specifically. So using kind of like deductive reasoning, I know some people aren't going to like it, they might disagree with this theory, but here's what I think. I believe that the health pack is going to be able to interface with the rig directly and maybe the health bar is actually a measure of the material left in reserve versus actual electrical signal. I must stress, again, this is purely hypothetical, but this liquid exists in the spinal area of the rig and that is literally going to be a filled bar. When a person is attacked, this liquid is released directly into the body and quickly begins repairing, saving the person's life. This could be why when you are heavily damaged, you begin to wobble when you stand as you are very low on this particular fluid and feeling the strong effects of the damage to your body. This wobble only happens when the tank is depleted, but does not happen prior to when you get stabbed or slashed by necromorphs. So what would it actually take to keep someone alive and what would this material actually be? First, we need to understand wounds. Seems like kind of a standard concept, but there's actually a lot lot that happens with your body when you actually get injured. When a puncture hole is made in the human body, much more is needed than just your standard platelets. While they do a great job to shut off veins and capillaries, anything larger such as arteries or major veins will be too large to heal naturally or without surgical intervention. So one of the main things is these health packs must contain probably something similar to an extracellular matrix. Extracellular matrix is a three-dimensional network of macromolecules like collagen, enzymes, glycoproteins, and these are going to actually provide structural and biochemical support to the surrounding cells. In a sense, this is like the wrought iron of a building. Extracellular matrix is used to bridge the gap between large wounds and in some cases can completely regrow portions of the body. For instance, humans actually possess a regenerative ability that leaves us around the age of 12, but prior, let's say that a child gets the tip of their finger cut off, the ECM will regenerate that portion of the finger, whereas in adults it would just heal over and you would be missing that part of your finger. Anyhow, this ECM is going to be able to help Isaac survive wounds that would pretty much outright kill him. It can be imagined that the rig armor will administer the ECM in the form of an injection that would activate upon exposure to the oxygen, sealing the wound in the process or at minimum providing an anchor point for our next piece of the puzzle. ECM isn't just going to be enough to fix a wound though. You also need cells to fill the gaps and while platelets would probably be the first to arrive on the scene to help clot the blood loss, they would quickly be lost. Ergo, what else is going to be needed is going to be a strong clotting factor as well as stem cells. Stem cells are going to be cells that have not specialized yet and upon placing them near other cells they take on these properties and assimilate. I believe that genetic engineering in the future
future probably would use CRISPR altering the genome of these cells, and these could be used after injection to latch onto or be contained within the ECM to specialize into your normal cells. The genome of these stem cells may be altered enough to allow generations to pass at a great rate of speed to promote quick healing times that have a self shut off bringing them back down to normal mitotic levels once the wound is healed. This would give the user the ability to recover from these life-threatening wounds at a quick rate, allowing them to continue. These stem cells may also be able to replace the lost blood in the area at an accelerated rate, leading to the prevention of shock and associated organ death in the area. But all this is great, but there is probably going to be some added components into the mixture that prevent loss of consciousness. In moments of great pain, it is entirely possible for a person to experience loss of consciousness. If this was the case during a necromorph attack, or even what its design purpose, you're working in a dangerous environment, this could quickly lead to your death. It's clear that some form of painkiller must be present in the mixture. This would allow the person to sustain heavy damage and even though the wound is healing, they are still able to function and move, hopefully getting out of the area. This painkiller would more than likely be injected into the spinal cord itself to prevent the signal from reaching the brain. Localized analgesic would more than likely be released into the circulatory system as well to numb pain at the site of the wound while the body heals and for when the spinal painkiller decreases in effectiveness. Overall, the rig system is in place to negate damage and help you survive in hostile environments such as space or from physical attacks. The spinal unit more than likely measures the overall health of an individual and uses the coloring on the system to show how much is available for usage and changes its color as it's administered. The health packs can refuel this canister, increasing the overall health and the rig system keeps you alive. The health packs would need to contain a mixture of ECM, stem cells modified for quick healing, and a painkiller to keep you up and in the land of the living. Again, when you are low on this fluid, the canister is blinking and this is why you are unsteady as you are feeling the effects of your wounds, which would understandably make any one of us probably go unconscious. So that about wraps up the rig armor. I really do want to hear what you have to think down about my hypothesis as really every time I post a video or like kind of like an idea like this, somebody has got kind of like a cool way of thinking about it that I didn't previously have or has like an idea I didn't think about and I always like kind of interacting and talking about those. And I actually do listen because I use those in later videos. So let me know what you think about this idea. If you are new here and you like the video, please hit that sub button. Who knows, maybe we will reach 100K before 2019. If you are regular, then please leave a like as you know, it always helps the video. I ran this idea on a Twitter poll and this is the one that got voted for the most. So if you'd like to chime in on future topics, I will drop my Twitter link as well as my Discord link in the description. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support the channel. But in the meantime, I would like to thank my patrons. At the scientists tier, we have Layla Lizarin and then we got Bowen Goodwin. Next up, our residents are going to be Richard Muhlenberg and Evan Osborne. Holding it down with their PhD in genetics, we have A. Laurentis, Andrew Lawson, Divine Whisper, John Russo, Laffy Noskill, and Steve N. Our masters in biology are going to be Adam Hartswick, Brian H. Briggs, Javier D. Rodriguez, Scott Grant, and the Otterman. And those with their bachelors in morphological sciences are going to be Ahigao Comics, Alex the Gun Guy, Average Soul, Dustin Ellis, Eric Scott Gillies, Jims, Joseph Radical, Professor Bennett's, and Zachary Baker. Thank you guys for your continued support. Currently, I am still playing through Resistance, so expect that in the future. I should be getting a PS4 for Christmas, fingers crossed. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Roanoke Gaming. The Roanoke has two ends in it because somebody jacked the original one uh, to kind of, you know, vote on which topic you want to see. So thanks for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one.